Hello, everyone. All right. So over the next uh, few weeks, I guess a few months, probably, I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling. And as a result, I figure we can play a game kind of like Where's Waldo, which is in this case, Where's Michael? So what I will do is, uh, before we get into this video, you guys, if you want, can go and comment somewhere below and uh, say where you think that I am. And then next video, I will tell you where I was in this one and we will, uh, we will switch it up as I'm, uh, as I'm traveling around. Anyway, today we're gonna talk about a new uh, Golden Visa program, which is always exciting. Uh, there's some you know, downsides to this one, at least with respect to timing. But that being said, I think it says something very interesting about where we're at in the world today and kind of a different side of what, uh, what might be relevant to, uh, to Golden Visas and kind of the effect that they have on local countries. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for supporting us as always. And if you would like help with relocating abroad, getting residencies and citizenships, paying the lowest legal amount tax possible, etc., please reach out to us. You can book a call calendar.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below, or you can send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. And it is a bright day. It's nice. Um, so the country that we're talking about today is Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka uh, obviously is in a mess right now. For those of you who don't know, they went bankrupt. I think inflation hit 19%, food prices up 30%. They are having all kinds of issues with, uh, with their situation there. Uh, lots of political turmoil, lots of financial breakdown. Sri Lanka is a pretty poor place in general. Uh, I was there, I guess, just before uh, COVID happened. And I mean, it's less developed than say Bali or Thailand or something like that. And so it doesn't offer the most in terms of kind of conveniences, quality of life, things to do. Roads have really bad traffic. If you were to go say from Colombo to Kandy, I mean, it's not that far, but it's a long, long uh, journey. And they've got, however, some really nice uh, nature and really nice wildlife. There is famously some leopards you can go see there, and that's really cool. Uh, monkeys and elephants and all these sorts of things. There's some nice hiking. Uh, there's some beaches and surfing on the south of the island, etc. But yeah, they're in a really tough spot right now. So to help address this, they brought in a golden visa program. And I think this speaks to, you know, there's a lot of narrative out there that says, oh, you know, these rich people taking advantage. It's like, look, it's actually good for these countries. That's why they have these programs. It's not just, you know, out of some, I don't know, it's actually mutually beneficial. So the way that it works here is it's $75,000 investment in property or a $100,000 deposit in a bank. Uh, you need to hold the investment for the full length of the visa. It's five year or 10 year respectively. So kind of long term no statements yet on you know whether that might lead to citizenship or uh, what consequences there might be in terms of uh, beyond the uh, the initial visa period conceivably it will be renewable but at least it gives a person a backup and if they want to get in there i mean you know they talk about buy when there's blood in the streets there's basically literally blood in the streets in this case so uh, probably not now but sometime in the not too distant future maybe there will be some buying opportunities. You'd have to check for yourself. It's not an area that I personally will invest, but uh, some people like it for kind of food production. There's a lot of tea there, actually. I got some very great tea. They have gold tip and silver tip. It's, I believe, the number one tea exporter and the number two tea producer in the world. So yeah, very, very nice people, uh, inexpensive, um, nice, uh, nice nature. Like I said, bad, bad infrastructure not uh, not well established yet at this point in time but might be useful for somebody who wants a very uncorrelated totally different direction to go recognizing of course that you know it doesn't necessarily make that much sense uh, for most people as a place to live but you know if you're putting 75,000 into a property maybe over time that has some upside and gives you in the meantime a backup or if you want another bank account they notably are a non-CRS country uh, you know, would I trust their banks? I don't know. I'm not sure if I would trust their banks really, but you know, for each of you who might be interested, you can check it out. Let me know what you think, put it in the comments below, and I'm going to see you on the next video.